the new standard in performance and safety. At 35,490 fully equipped and seven year warranty, the all new MG HS is value you've never seen before. Findelaney, big thanks bro for joining me on Gibbo Goes One on One driven by MG. Mate, how are you? Where sure. are you? What have you been doing since the season? My, uh, my pleasure, mate. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm in Auckland at the moment, just uh, just working out, and um, pretty consider myself pretty lucky. And everyone here, obviously, we're kind of um, in the current climate, doing pretty well. So, um, being able to work out and things like that helps. So, um, life's pretty uh, normal, I guess, which is really good. It must be pretty nice. Obviously, Victoria, where we are right now, has gone mm. back into a stage three lockdown. But I know you guys yeah. in New Zealand have done it really well. Um, yeah. So you probably haven't gone through the whole struggles of, I mean, I think you guys are locked down for a little bit, but just being able to live yeah. in your life must be awesome for an athlete. Yeah, exactly. I think we, um, yeah, we did really well. Obviously, we had a really strict, strict lockdown and, and seemed to work. So um, obviously, we're seeing the, the fruits of that and um, enjoying, um, you know, being able to, to live somewhat um, normally. Um, now, you grew up in Nelson? I did. Tell me about uh, family, you have brothers and sisters. Um, you know, how did basketball kind of come about? Yeah, five of us, um, my mum, dad, uh, my brother, Mac, uh, younger sister, Charlotte, as well, um, and Nelson. So it was a really good upbringing. Obviously, it's a bit of a small town, small town New Zealand. So um, I guess uh, my brother played basketball and I just followed him, followed him through it. And then um, went up the stages with, you know, Nelson High School and, and things like that. And um, and then the, the breakers picked me up later on down the, down the line. But um, yeah, obviously, small town New Zealand, you kind of grow up playing everything, play rugby, volleyball tennis, swimming, so um, it, was, it was really good. You look like a natural athlete. I'm sure you're pretty gifted at a lot of different sports. Was basketball the main one or, you know, was rugby being from New Zealand? Like, what was there anything else that kind of potentially could have st uh, stole you away from, from playing ball? Um, basketball was always, was always like, uh, was always the main one and always the, the driving force. But like, like I kind of just touched on, I played everything. So I played rugby um, very seriously throughout, throughout high school. Um, Cricket was another one I played for a little while and got pretty into volleyball as well. Um, but rugby was probably the main, main second one um, that, that I played at sort of a high level. You enjoy going to, to watch, um, you know, rugby games back home when you have spare time. Cricket, is that still like something you like to go and do away from playing, playing uh, basketball? Yeah, hundred percent. I've still got a, I've still got a lot of good friends that play professionally um, in, the, in the super rugby teams and a few have gone on to play have caps for the All Blacks. So it's always good to, um, watch them do their thing and obviously they're, they're great guys to be able to you know talk about um, life as a professional athlete about how they train um, how they do things and um, being able to sort of like pick their brains as well really helps. Um, Australian basketball I guess for juniors you know we go through the state programs or whatever then you know the Australian Institute of Sports a lot of the pathway for a lot of us to go through before a college or NBL um, you obviously played a Div 2 for one year at college. Was mm. that your first kind of move away from home kind of yeah. experience? Yeah, so obviously being from a small town and New Zealand's a lot smaller in general, we, we don't really have a lot, a lot of pathways and, and things like that. So um, coming out of coming out of Nelson, I had sort of no looks in, in the sort of sense of college or in the, the pro world or anything like that. So it took, a, took about a five-month um, scholarship at a, at a D2 school. Well, was, I left after five months. Um, and then just went, came back home, went to university in, um, in New Zealand for, for a little while, kind of spent six months just kind of partying and figuring out what, what life is and what I wanted to do. And then um, played another season in New Zealand League and then kind of with the breakers, Dean Vickerman at the time and, and, and Judd Slavel kind of rang me and said, we want you to come and, come and work out and just um, try out. And I didn't think much of it at the time. I definitely didn't think um, six years later I'd, I'd be... I'll be where I am now. So, um, you know, appreciate, appreciate them for picking me up and working at it. And yeah, it kind of came out of nowhere when it came. I was sort of just, you know, at university in, in Otago and New Zealand, sort of living a much different life. So, yeah. That was, that was obviously what changed from, you know, growing up, being around home. I left home at a fairly young age, but if I had been around home, I probably would have been to parties with my mates and stuff. Was that the kind yeah. of like, let's get serious and, you know, go to the breakers route and the pro route compared to, you know, just doing it something you love, hanging with your mates on weekends. Was that something that kind of changed, I guess, your mindset? Yeah, 100%. I think just being in the professional environment and then learning. Um, well, firstly, learning that, you know, I can do this and, and having that belief and then seeing other guys and just seeing kind of a, a better life, I guess, something that I wanted to, to work, work work towards. And also just having a bit of um, 
gratitude, I guess, of being able to be in a position that, that I can work towards that. Um, yeah, but as you said, it was, you know, it was black and white, you know, I was living, living this life and then it went down a, a much other turn. So it was great. One of them um, always put up on Instagram to ask questions for my guests and whatnot. And one of them was, you know, who was your idol growing up? Now being a, a format, like a, kind of an undersized four man a little bit like i guess if you play international ball but do you have an idol growing up um i was lucky enough to play with dylan boucher micka vicona mm. ty wesley who's not a kiwi but you know played in new zealand mm. did you have anyone specific kind of growing up that you like loved and kind of tried to mold your game around and then being around those kind of guys like they're two dylan and micka and two, two of my favorite teammates i've ever had just the way they play and you know, they've got your back when you're on court with them. Is there, is there someone that you kind of looked up to um, and then having those guys to learn off and kind of mould around, I guess, a little bit, being in the same position? Yeah, I think um, it was definitely, from an early on, it was definitely Mika. He obviously spent time in, in Nelson and um, grew up a little bit there. And then when I was at the Breakers, he, he was here. And he kind of um, was another guy that really helped that transition for me and kind of, um, I remember he came into high school one day and, and did a talk and then I was at the time training with the, the New Zealand league team that he was with and he kind of said, you, you, you can, he kind of took me aside afterwards and said, you can kind of, you can do this and, um, you know, just keep working at it. And then he really helped that transition when I first got here and then was, um, he's obviously a, a leader and, and a strong man that, um, that helps a lot of people around him. Um, and then when I got to the breakers, uh, Kirk Penny was, was the one I, I really liked to, to learn from and how to um, really help me shoot the ball, um, help me work and the professionalism side of things as well. So I learned a lot from, from both of those guys. Was it crazy, um, obviously being a school kid, having someone like Mika come and talk to you and then, you know, not long after playing alongside in national teams and whatnot, like just that whole, I remember having people come and talk to me and then I've, I've played with them, you know, or yeah. against them in the NBL, that whole, that whole thing. How, how was that? Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a funny one because you kind of realize um, how special and unique that is in hindsight. You know, at the time, it seems like a natural progression and um, you sort of uh, go through those, those, those stages. But then when you look back on it, it's like, you know, that is crazy. It was the guy that, you know, came into, even before that, he was a guy that came into my primary school when I was sort of 10, took classes and things like that. And then um, looked up to him even from, from then and then um, playing together, you know, with a few years, professionally playing together and, also um, in the national team, it's, um, you know, looking back on it, it's pretty crazy. Has it set in for you that you're now kind of in that position where people now look up to you? Like, I'm sure you go back to schools and probably talk to kids. Like, is it kind of set in that now you're that role model, you're in that position, and that's kind of now your responsibility, like it was, Mika, to you to, to I guess, give back to the younger kids at school kind of coming through? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I've, I spent a little bit of time back in back in Nelson um, just after lockdown, and was able to go back to my high school and um, talk to some of the guys there, and also just you know in the gym at the moment, just you know some younger guys coming through and things like that. You always have to uh, help them as, as much as you can, and you definitely feel um, like you should, you know, especially when you spend you know spend time around guys like that that have helped me so much. Um, Ty Wesley, obviously my teammate this last year, you've, you've had a bit of time with Ty, obviously he's just retired. Um, what, have you got, what have you got on Ty? Like obviously he's one of the best low post players I've kind of been around. He goes right every single time, but somehow he still gets yeah. it off. How was your time yeah. with him and kind of anything um, on Ty's kind of retirement, I guess? Yeah, he's obviously just a, uh, a special teammate, a special guy to be around. You know, he's got a quality to... Um, bring people together that, that not many have, um, you know, in the locker room and, and on court. And then he's just, um, you know, a true competitor. He definitely doesn't like to lose and, and things like that. He's a special talent as well on the court, like you said. You kind of know he's going right, but he's just so good. He's so good at getting back to it, you know, some of those guys like that are. So um, it's obviously sad for, you know, for us as players to, to see him leave our league. But, um, you know, just congratulations to him and his family on um, you know, moving on to different things. You played um, NZ NBL for a bunch of years. Um, I played one game last year as a feeling. It's, <laughs> it's an awesome league. Like the quality yeah. of the players, like all the you know, Aussies go over be imports and whatnot. Um, you're, you're not playing in that now. I'm not. Then, no. How, have you have you been watching it? Like how is the new? Obviously, they're playing a lot of games now. It's with COVID. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of scheduling and whatnot. Like have you kind of been watching that and, and how's the NZ NBL been for you, I guess, playing through that and then helping you progress, I guess, your career? Yeah, for me, it obviously helped a lot early on in the stage of my career where I could um, 
be a development or just not just on the roster with the breakers and then go back down sort of at all level and um, be kind of one of the main key guys in the in the team so you kind of um, spend your year with different situations and in different scenarios so you, you learn both um, yeah at the moment I think it's great what, what, what they're doing with the NZNBL it's obviously giving a lot of guys it's obviously we're living in a different climate in the, at the moment in the world post coronavirus lockdown and, and things like that um, so they've been creative and, and things like that and put together a short league and um, I think it's fantastic for, for a lot of guys that um, don't usually get to um, be a you know main main player on a team and things like that. I've got friends that are playing for Nelson and in, um, in, in this competition this year, and you know they're looking great. You know they're, yeah. they're playing playing the game, and they haven't had the opportunity to do that in a long time. So um, it's cool to watch guys like that. You know, you know, thrive and enjoy themselves. Now you're ne- you're a Nelson boy. Grew up in Nelson. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Big rivals with Wellington, I believe. Um, you obviously yeah. went, you obviously went and played with Wellington for I don't know how many yeah. years. Um, yeah. How was that whole whole transition to the to the dark side, if you will? It's I've been it's kind of like Ray Allen leaving Boston and going yeah. to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, was, I, actually, I actually never got there. Thanks to coronavirus, I never got there. So I signed uh, for this season, just just being, um, and obviously that season was was wiped before this competition, and then decided not to play. So I've never I never played a game, but I did sign, and it was you know a tough thing. It's one of those things that happen in professional sport that you got to you know make a decision. There's various factors and. Um, yeah, it was just, you know, something that happened, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I want to talk about the Tall Blacks. Like, obviously, like, I know playing for Australia, it's like one of the biggest honours you can have as an athlete to, to represent your country. You've obviously been a part of the, the Tall Blacks for a little while now. Like, how was, I guess, your first experiences and being invited in for the first time as a young kid or whatever to the, to the Tall Blacks and being around that program that just means so much to, you know, your brothers and, I guess, the country? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's huge. Obviously, you know, you touched on what, what it means to for a player to play for the country. It's the ultimate. And um, I actually missed out. I think the first three three years I had trials and, and missed out, so it made it even um, even more special when I finally got the the opportunity. And it's just so um, you know, it's special to you know we spend when we go on these trips with, with the national team. We're often away for a month. You know, six weeks was was our last one of the World Cup, and you work so hard and you. Um, build for something like a World Cup and, you know, to be able to go and, um, you know, be an underdog and knock some of those teams off and, you know, play some really good players. You know, it's a special opportunity and you, um, especially from a smaller country, we spend a lot of time through the age groups and things with, with you know, these players and these teammates. So it's special to go and do those with um, various guys. I've seen, um, I think, a report not too long ago, the funding, like, I know for years and years it's been, the funding for basketball has been pretty tough in NZ basketball for both both men and women, I've seen, like, I think there's some progression there. Like, that must mean so much, I guess, for you guys playing that, you know, there's some support and some funding coming for you guys to be able to go on tours and and make life a little bit easier for the national team. Yeah, 100%. I think, um, you know, just in the last few few days or week, kind of the... um that door's just been just been opened a little bit with, with the funding, so hopefully it can um, keep opening and the floodgates can open, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you, as you said, there's you know a lot of people every year that you know fight for fight for you know sense for us to go and do what we do, which is hugely appreciated. And um, a lot of people have been fighting for this funding, so um, it's cool to see that you know finally start start cooking down, and we we hope that it can um, keep coming. One of the best things I think about playing, obviously country to country, but Australia versus New Zealand is. The Harker, like, I know how much it means to you guys, and I'll get you to touch on that in a minute, but, like, I know as an opponent, like, the, even just watching the Harker um, on TV or, you know, replays and stuff, the, the goosebumps and just, the, I guess, raw emotion that you get out of the Harker, like, was it hard to learn? I guess, I know you guys go through a bit of a process to learn it, but then mm. um, just how much it means to actually do that with your group of boys. Yeah, I think it was hard to learn, only because um, as a Kiwi, you know how much it means to, to everyone. So when you do it and, and when you learn it, it needs the utmost respect and you want to do it right. And um, it's a privilege to do so. And who taught us, it's a privilege to learn from them. So really wanted to, to do it right and to learn it properly and, and learn what every word means, every action means and things like that. So um, yeah, it's obviously very meaningful and um, it's a great, it's a privilege to be able to do it before a game. And um, it's, yeah, it's cool. And it's not just before games. I think it was, I think when Kirk um, Penny retired, I think it was Kirk, I think both teams, I yeah, can't remember who the was. game was against. Um, and you guys, I think after the game, 
on court, maybe Paulie Hanari jumped in and like you guys kind of yeah. didn't hark it for that. So it's not just a, a pre-game thing. It's more like just yeah. more a sign of respect. Yeah, I think it was against uh, Melbourne United, the playoff series a few years ago after Coop's last game. So yeah, just a sign of respect, um, sign of appreciation to what he's done for New Zealand basketball and the club. And um, yeah, as you said, just more than anything, a sign of respect. Do you have any, um, I don't know if you guys do rookie rookie duties or, you know, yeah. first time players. I know for Australia, we used to have to do like a rookie show. Do you guys do any of that? And do you have any kind of big games with the Tall Blacks that you're like, man, that was awesome. We beat whoever. Or is there anything that kind of stands out from a national team um, point of view? We have initiations, which means you kind of just have to <laughs> sing a song or something like that. Something um, fun for the boys, you know. Um, yeah, there's a lot of moments that... that uh, that come to mind. We had a win against Lebanon in Lebanon with, with kind of a junior Tall Blacks team that was huge. You know, they needed to win it and it's just crazy over there. They had about 8,000 people in a 5,000 seat stadium and yeah. flares going off in the rafters, rafters and all that sort of fun stuff. And, you know, we beat them in a massive game, which was great. We also uh, beat Turkey at the end of the World Cup, just 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 being, which was a uh, first time New Zealand ever beat Turkey, which was, was huge. Um, and also, I mean, we lost, but playing um, playing Greece and playing against Giannis and Timokumpo and guarding him a lot was, was huge for me. I always remember that. Um, and yeah, I think those are some of the moments that come to mind. Is uh, Giannis one of the toughest you've, you've played against? Um, I mean, you probably only played the one game. Is there anyone that yeah. you've played against? You're like, man, like, hey, that was... <laughs> that was a nightmare, yeah. you know, like, or a lot of fun to play against. Like, obviously, you played yeah. against He's a pretty talented... Yeah, probably... Probably, probably the best. I think. Um, yeah, he, the the game's different for for him. You could tell that it was different for him. You know, the driving lanes aren't so open. He can't shoot that that well and that that team and the other team. But um, yeah, he was. But all of those guys, you know, are high level yearly guys and um, were amazing to play against. So um, yeah. Um, you got to spend some time at summer league with Dallas. Um, you know, how was that whole process I guess um, a few of the guests I've had on have been to summer league and going through all that mm. stuff um, you know how, how was that being in Dallas and going through that yeah it was fantastic obviously I went to I went to a mini camp first and kind of had no expectations no and talked about summer league at that time and um, I just went with you know like I said no expectations and just kind of balled out and played really well and um, got picked up for summer league so um, everything on from them was a bonus really so uh, you know, I really enjoyed my time. Like, I think for, for an athlete to, to grow, especially basketball players, you need to find different situations. So in that off-season, I went from playing my first time in Europe and Serbia and then all the way over to Dallas, which was, you know, vast contrasts. And then the World Cup, which was different as well. So um, it was just a cool, you know, different experience and um, had a lot of fun and played, you know, some great um, players as well and competed. So it was fun, really fun. Obviously, Luka Doncic is taken over the NBA. Did you get to spend much time with him? He seems like a fair bit of a character. I know Creaky's talked about mm. him a little bit. Um, seems like a real larrikin. Like, was he, did you have much to do with him um, while you were not, over there? Not really. We kind of had an afternoon where, where he was around and got to talk to him a little bit um, and watch him work out and things like that. But not, 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 he wasn't around um, much. It was just kind of a few hours in an afternoon session. And um, yeah, obviously, watching him work out was insane. And um, cool to you know, have a joke with him and things like that. But not too much. Obviously, the NBA is a goal. Um, obviously, with COVID going on, who knows what's going on, but that's obviously somewhere you want to be in the near future. I'm sure your agent's in contact with teams. Like, is that something that you're really going to try and push for in the near future to try and, you know, make a squad or make a team? Yeah, 100%. I obviously want to be back in that, those situations like, like Summer League and, and around teams and um, working towards that. So, like you said, we'll see what, you know, what's left of the world and <laughs> that's a pretty bleak way to put it, but... Um, yeah, we'll see. You know how those how those opportunities um, present themselves uh, after this, and um, we'll go for it. Now, your breakers team went through a lot of highs and or a lot of some highs, lows. Um, mm. Obviously, you were injured this last year for the start of a little bit, and yeah, I had Glenn Rice coming in and out and super disrupted. Um, kind of new coach, new program, new management. Um, you guys got healthy. You guys were pretty much written off, and then went on this massive run. Like, how was that going yeah. through? The start of it, all the shit going on to then like going on a massive run and being like one of the, the best teams to watch towards the end of the end of the season. Yeah, it was fantastic. It really was. Obviously, we had um, a lot of change at the start of the year and throughout the year. And with that comes, you know, a little bit of a, um, a 
periodization, I, I guess, of, of how to get it rolling. And, you know, in the locker room, we always, we talked about it a lot. We we're always so confident that things were going to click because we knew what we were kind of capable of. Um, and when we started winning games, it, we, you know, we really started winning games. So um, that was a lot of fun. You know, it was really cool to be um, in the midst of that, um, kind of that storm and then sort of find our way through it with the, with the guys and, and work through that. And I really, really enjoyed the, the year with, um, you know, new coaches and, and things like that and learned so much, so much from them. So, um, yeah. It looked like um, you obviously yourself was playing with a lot of confidence. Was it, was it, was that kind of the coach's style? Um, you know, obviously you had Scotty Hobson doing his thing, a um, bunch of your players just kind of free, but it looked like towards, definitely towards the end of the year when you guys were on a roll and you were playing with super, a lot of confidence. Was that like a direction from the coach to just play free? Was that come from like more the NBA model style from like Matty Walsh and that? Or, you know, where did that, that whole feel come from? Because obviously when you're rolling, Things are awesome, and it, it yeah. was so much fun to watch. No, that no, that was definitely Dan and Modi. Obviously, um, you know, we had a lot of strong-minded guys in the in the, in the locker room, and um, need a lot of strong-minded guys with the way we wanted to play and the way we want to work and train. So, um, you know, confidence definitely comes comes from that. Um, and you know, when we when we started rolling, we 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 kind of kind of knew what we were capable of. You know, so we're playing with a lot of confidence and. Um, Kind of a shorter rotation too, so pe people really got used to being on the court and really used to playing together. So, and we were really enjoying it. Obviously, you know, when you're when you're winning and you're having fun, it, it helps with everything. A couple of those uh, close games, you know, Scotty hit some game winners, but there were definitely some big shots, especially the Brisbane game. You come down and hit a massive three, a couple yeah, of buckets. Yeah. Yeah. You just you just out there. It feels like you're just doing whatever you want. You just out there freestyling yeah. a little bit, like dribbling all over the place, like taking big shots. Is that just? Is that something you've tried to work on? Is that just a mindset from the confidence within the group? Or, you know, where, where that... Because it wasn't just Scotty knocking down... It was him knocking yeah. down game winners, but there was a lot yeah. that led up before that. I mean, everything like that definitely comes from work, you know, how to work working on things that you just, that you just um, touched on. But I think it's definitely, um, you know, knowing, um, knowing the game a little bit more and, and what needs to happen and, and what I need to do and what I can do and trusting myself a little bit more as well when you've been in that situation um, with that team and also more throughout my career. But, um, yeah, like you said, it's always just work, you know, working on things and enjoying it and then just having the confidence to and wanting to, you know, take those shots, which I definitely do at the end of the game. So um, it's fun, you know. Um, and, and moving forward for next season, uh, rumours, obviously, try, you were trying to get, I think, Isaac Foti, I think he's going back to Europe, but um, Ty Webster, potential to come on and, and be a part of the breakers, obviously a New Zealand kid, it'd be pretty exciting to get him and get that core group of New Zealand talent that you guys had years ago back in and, and really build off that. Yeah, it would be, obviously. I play with Ty a lot and the, the national team and things like that. It'd be great to have him, have him around, have him on the team would be cool, so um, we'll see what happens. No inside information for the... <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I have done. I wish. I wish. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Um, now, hobbies outside of basketball, I believe that you love reading books. Is there anything yeah, that uh, you, you're reading right now that people might be interested in? Um, uh, off the top of my head, I, I'm, not, I'm not reading at the moment, actually. I don't have anything, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> And then art, I believe art. So um, Cole Adnan, one of my teammates, you got to play with him um, yeah. in New Zealand and, and live with him. He said art and painting type stuff is something, a bit of a hobby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it goes back to the, the Nelson thing. Obviously, grew up around a lot of um, influences like literature and, and art and um, have a lot of friends that are artists as well. So I um, always followed it and enjoyed it. And, you know, it was always at galleries and museums and things like that. So... Um, you know, painting is kind of a natural progression of that as well. So dabbling that a little bit, but um, I just really enjoy it and just kind of pursue the interest of it. Being a true athlete, um, I've been told you like to stretch a lot and like take care of your body. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've oh, really done your homework. You really hey, I don't, I don't mess around. I dig into some people. Um, Kyle like said it. potentially a couple of times came home to a, a naked body stretching in the living room. And <laughs> <laughs> He's just talking shit. Yeah. Um, so I like to stretch. You lost me. Lost a lot. Another another question I had from I think a New Zealand fan was about the moustache. Now obviously I can see you here. The moustache has come along quite nicely there. I get asked about it a bit, eh? and I always just say it takes me so long to grow it that I have just attachment issues from from letting it go again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. it comes and goes.
Now, um, my, my last one I had was, and I can see you right now, you're drinking. I, I believe you're a coffee fiend. Like, I've, I've been told by Kyle, Juddy, um, who else? You've definitely, you've definitely done your homework. Someone else commented, <laughs> teas and whatever, but coffee, I believe, is your, your kryptonite. You, you drink a lot of coffee? Drink a lot of coffee. I enjoy it. Um, you know, I like spending time in the cafes, like a lot of athletes do and things like that. So, um, yeah, I enjoy it for sure. Yeah. Juddy Flavel, uh, New Zealand assistant coach, um, our assistant coach at the Phoenix. Now, he told me that he, he told you he did a little bit of research and studies show that it narrows your vision. Now, I believe yeah. after he told you that you may have <laughs> freaked out a little bit. Is there any rumour to that, that, whole, that whole story? I, I remember that conversation. Um, I freaked out a little bit for about maybe half a day and then got back on it. <laughs> Coffee. It's good for you. Um, do, great do you have... I was going to ask this... Who do, you, who do you think is the all-time, well, I mean, there's a lot of great New Zealand players, but do you, do you have a top three of all-time uh, New Zealand players? Kirk Penny, Paulie, Dylan, Mika. Um, I mean, there's like Stephen Adams on that list. Stephen Adams, like, I was, I'll ask yeah, him I mean, top three. I mean, top three, Steve, Sean Marks, Kirk. That's a pretty solid little lineup there. Do you think? Um, yeah. Do you think? Obviously, it would be awesome, and he's got his reasons why. But you, you think he'll he'll ever play for the national team? I mean, I, I hope so. Obviously, you know, I think his situation is so different to um, to mine and everyone else. So, it's, so I find it hard to, to speak on that, you know, because yeah. I, I don't I don't know his his situation and um, things like that. And I, you can't unless you're you know in his in his in his shoes. So I mean, obviously, it'd be amazing if he's been out with the Tall Blacks, but. Um, you know, you have to respect um, decisions what one makes. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and last one, like obviously um, Tokyo, like you, you, obviously a goal. Like I'm not sure the process for you guys. Hundred percent. So, so we obviously we were supposed to be in um, Serbia about now actually. Um, you know, with that uh, ripetrage tournament of trying to find the qualifiers, so we had to beat um, Serbia and Serbia and things. You know, tough road, but um, we're definitely eyeing that up. Um, so I. I, I guess um, off the top of my head, that's been postponed 12 months. Um, but again, we'll, we'll see, you know, what's, what's after all this, we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed, man. Yeah. No, that's all I had for you. Um, yeah. you know, awesome. I've heard the, the coffee thing's a big thing. It's, I've seen you, as soon as you clicked <laughs> in, sipping on that coffee. Then, yeah. uh, literally everyone I've asked has been like, asking about the coffee, asking about coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. I used to be pretty bad, you know, like I used to have a lot during the day and then I, I just took it to the angle of just trying to have good coffee and things like that now. So um, I'm, I'm lowering the numbers. There's a lot worse things you could have, mate. Trust me. 100%. That's what I, that's what I always say too. But mate, um, no, I appreciate you taking some time out over there in New Zealand. Glad you guys are able to live a normal life, not being locked down yes. and can yeah. get out and hoop and do whatever, but yeah, a little bit jealous. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I mean, take it easy, man. So another six weeks, is it? Six weeks, and then we'll uh, see what happens after that. Tough, tough, but man. Mate, um, big, big thanks for joining me, mate, on Gibber Goes One on One, driven uh, by MG. Appreciate it. We'll keep off, keep following, mate, and uh, yeah, all the best. Pleasure. Thanks, man. Hi, right, bro. Easy.